Welcome back to Let's Play Canon Standard Edition for the PC. The last episode. We only discovered that we have in fact known Makoto in the past, but that is all. There's nothing else we know so far. Now she wants to read manga! It's quite funny, watching Makoto revise her approach in the hopes of finding a way to persuade me. Oh, I give up. I can't really let her go and bother Akiko, who will be busy getting supper ready. And she's right. Anyway, I don't have anything better to do. Reluctantly, I rolled back over. So we lie side by side, propped up on our elbows. Are you serious? You can't read this? Yeah, like the word hard. You could read the stuff I lent you before, couldn't you? How is this any different? Was this the Death Note one? Nah, it's not. No, I think this is the kiddie stuff, stupid. I'm going to! Just give me a chance, okay? And some room to breathe. Stop breathing on my hands then! It's annoying! Fine, fine. Calm down. Can you see now? Then I'll begin. Love is such a sudden thing. Oh man, I hope it's not all going to be sappy, girly stuff. But diarrhea strikes even more suddenly. <laughs> Oh, I love that line for some reason. It's just out of nowhere. Oh, wouldn't it be funny if it did, though? I wouldn't put it past the manga to put something like that in it. Damn, you noticed! Even as I joke, I begin to lose awareness of what I am saying. As I become more conscious of Makoto's little body by my side, I realize something. This is just like it was back then. When I laid down to read, she was there beside me. I tried prodding her cheek. Nothing in particular. Okay, okay. And thus, we passed the time till supper. Unusually quietly for us, if you discount the squawks of outrage every time I try to improve the story. Don't worry, I'll come back for you, I swear. I'll come back to be with you. No, to marry you. But till then, farewell, or sayonara. And there, it ends. Blah, what a trite, sappy, cliche ending. Did he ever really explain what is the story? Did he just bugger off to war or what? That wasn't a sigh of disappointment. I'm just glad I only wasted my time on this and not on my money. Very short story, wasn't it? I mean, it was only like, what, two lines? Three lines? Good lord, you really do lap all this up, don't you? Look, marriage isn't all like, ooh, romantic. It's just drudgery and then divorce. Well, not all the time, but it does seem to happen. It's when people rush into it, really. I'm not trying to spoil anything. Just making sure you don't end up with unrealistic expectations. You know, like pretty much almost every girl, really. You'll thank me for it one day. That's true, though. Every, almost every girl is like, I want to get married someday and it'll be so romantic, but little do they know, it probably won't be. Relax, at least you're safe.
One. Would it be like he tries to get some tongue in at the you may kiss the bride thing and then he's like you bastard get away from me she slams the manga shut and storms out I can't imagine that she would be proposing to Umakot who's like will you marry me and then all of a sudden she just gets down on her knees and bites his tongue off and be like what do you do that for later that night I lie still on my bed staring up towards the ceiling darkness shrouds in shrouds it the wide awake, I feel like I'm dreaming. Like I lost my hold of reality on that hillside this afternoon and never got it back. It's a long, long dream. At once upon a time, back when I was a kid, I saved a fox cub on that hill. Well, this is the first time we've seen any image of Yuichi now, isn't it? One that had been attacked by something, and was so badly hurt that it could barely move. Then I took it home and nursed it back to health. That it was my constant companion, that I told it all sorts of things, and even slept in my bed. For two weeks till it was better. That's all. What kind of tale could that possibly inspire? What was it that began during those weeks? Surely it's just one of many fleeting events from my distant past. Nothing more. A dream. Surely. Friday, January 22nd. I wonder what that could mean. I mean, they wouldn't just put it there for no reason. Wait, go and get a free decent sound pack. There we go. Ow. From under the sheets, I swipe at the alarm clock. It shuts up. Hey, she slept in her own room. I roll out of bed, sticky with sweat from the heat that's accumulated under the quilt. It feels strangely wrong that she's not here. I guess this just goes to show that you should try to avoid getting too attached to people. I didn't even think I'd spend that long with her. But maybe the time we spent together in the past is still counting toward the total? Makoto! Wake up! I thump on her door and I pass, as I pass, then head down to breakfast. We all sit around the breakfast table, eating silently. It's unusually quiet. Then, I cl then a clatter breaks the silence. Hmm? Looking up, I see Makoto's hand is empty. A kicker rises and takes them. Damn phone. She runs them under the tap, wipes them off, and places them back in Makoto's hands. And she takes them, but she doesn't take hold properly, or even grip them. She just rolls them worriedly between her hands. Something up, Makoto? She looks up. If you're finished, I'll help you take care of that. She spreads her hands and holds them over her food, as though preparing to defend it to the death. This naturally results in her chopsticks hitting the floor again. Are you having fun? She's apologizing to Akiko-san then. I definitely heard her name. Akiko has stood up again and is picking them up. Did they eat everything with chopsticks though? I mean, it seems kind of inconvenient for some food. Anyway, viewers, see you next time. Let's play Cannon Sandwich for the PC.